Hello, this is Dr. Eric Bricker and thank you for watching A Healthcare Z. Today's topic is CVS Aetna has to get out of the PBM business. Now I'm going to do something a little different today where I'm going to single out one particular healthcare business's strategy and put it under the microscope. So let's take a look at it. Now, as many of you, if not all of you know, CVS is, CVS is rolling out these health hubs where they're actually going to be delivering primary care services inside of CVS stores to provide easier access, better care, at a lower cost. And that's according to the press release from CVS when they first announced that they're going to create these health hubs. I mean, that sounds like an awesome idea. They are opening them in Boston, Dallas, Fort Worth, Maryland, North Carolina, Ohio, and Virginia. And their plans are to have 1,500 of them by the end of 2021. I mean, if these health hubs were its own company, it would have it's a massive expansion of its own business if it was just its own entity. Now, you can think of these health hubs as essentially direct primary care or as a nearsight clinic. So if you're an employer, one of like the very viable and potentially smart strategies for you is to have direct primary care or a nearsight clinic. And here, through these health hubs, you could potentially do that. Now, they treat acute illnesses and chronic illnesses. They do wellness, they do vaccinations, they do flu shots. I mean, their services are actually quite comprehensive. It's awesome. Okay, now, the fact that CVS now owns Aetna means that, especially for their ASO customers, this is an amazing value proposition and a selling point for them. And also for their Medicare Advantage folks, where they're collecting premium from Medicare and the government and delivering care in a much higher quality, cost-effective fashion through these health hubs. And CVS Aetna gets to keep the difference so they could just be raking in the money with an effective implementation of this strategy for their Medicare Advantage patients. Now, there is a problem, and that problem is the Caremark PBM that they own. And this Caremark PBM, CVS actually shouldn't be called CVS. It should be called Caremark because that PBM thrives. It was a hundred and about approximately 120 billion out of the total 185 billion of revenue in 2017 for CVS. I wanted to use the numbers prior to the Aetna acquisition because I didn't want to muddy the waters with Aetna revenue. So just CVS revenue alone was about 185 billion dollars that year, and the PBM brought in about 120 billion dollars of that. In other words, the vast majority. Okay, so without getting into too much detail, let's just say that the that all PBMs make, I should say all PBMs, most traditional PBMs make more money the more prescriptions that are written and the more expensive the prescriptions that are written. So the PBM business model thrives on more prescription volume and more expensive prescription volume. Okay. So that means that CVS, with a fiduciary responsibility for its shareholders with its PBM, has an incentive to increase the number of prescriptions and the, to not necessarily do imaging or refer patients to somebody else like a hospital or to do tests or procedures, because CVS, they don't make money off of tests and procedures and hospitalizations. They make money off the prescriptions. So let me give you an example of this. So let's say somebody goes into a health hub with musculoskeletal pain, shoulder pain, arthritis, low back pain, etc. Very common. It would be expected that people would go into health hubs for musculoskeletal arthritis pain. Now, to maximize the revenue for the PBM, they might prescribe Duexis, which is a pain medication. It's not an opioid, okay? It's a non-opioid pain medication, which costs $2,601 for a 90-day supply. Now, they might not need 90 days, but let's just say it's a 90-day supply, okay? And then they might also prescribe a muscle relaxant like Soma, which is $882 for a 90-day supply. Or, if you, and the PBM would make a lot of money with that. Now, let's say you said, well, we don't care about the PBM revenue at all. Let's say you were a, nearsight clinic or direct primary care group or what have you, and you had no financial connection to a PBM whatsoever, what might you do? You might prescribe ibuprofen at $12 because it's either generic or it's even over the counter depending upon the dose. 
And two, you would actually have the person go to physical therapy and maybe they would have four sessions, which would be about $320. Okay, in this second scenario with the ibuprofen plus the uh, physical therapy, the PBM makes nothing. So here is an organization whose business model almost requires them to maximize PBM revenue, whereas the, to actually make easier access, better care, and at a lower cost, maybe it would make sense to not maximize the PBM's revenue. Maybe it would make, make more sense to do choice B. So the big question for CVS, Caremark, Aetna is, what are they gonna do with their PBM and their health hubs to reconcile this? And that's my point for today. Thank you for watching A Healthcare Z.